The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and AWS. Thanks, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada uses her power of engineering to find the things that you are looking for and the things that we are looking for during this chip shortage. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search this week? Okay, this week's Great Search, as you uh, very uh, intelligently foretold, is related to part shortages. Uh, we're in a chip shortage, which means that not, not only are there current parts that are hard to get, but older parts uh, that we've been using for a very long time, decade plus, um, have been harder to get because companies are focusing on their more profitable products, maybe their newer ones. And so um, very popular things that we thought we'd be able to get for a long time are now not recommended for new design, discontinued, end of life. Um, so the part that we're going to looking, be looking at today is the APX803, which is the part we've been using for, like again, over a decade. It's a power on reset circuit chip. Uh, which we use to generate reset pulses as our power supplies uh, come up from ground to you know 3.3 or 5 volts. So let's look at the computer. I'll show you where I use this part and how. So this is uh, an example, the APX803 SAG. You know, at the time, this was just the least expensive, uh, easiest to use power on reset circuit that I can get from DigiKey. It comes in three pin uh, SOT23. It, uh, looks at the VIN line, and when this, uh, when this pin you know, gets up to a certain voltage, in this case, uh, I think 2.6 volts, it will um, start a reset pulse on the TFT reset pin, which will um, pulse down, hold it for you know, about 200 milliseconds, and then release. Um, and what that does is if you have, you dis especially displays, I found TFTs and OLEDs, you know, sensors, I squared C sensors, they don't mind, you know, the power comes up slowly, they'll do their own little power on reset, or you can send them an I squared C command. But we've noticed that TFTs and OLEDs really, they can boot up in a very weird state. They really want a fresh reset pulse right out of power on. And um, normally you can just use a microcontroller pin if you have a lot of pins, connect one of those GPIOs to the reset, then before you initialize the display, you toggle the reset, um, and you're, you've got a clean set of registers to go on. But sometimes you don't have a lot of GPIO pins. Um, you know, in Arduino, you might not only have like a dozen pins. You really want to save them, especially if you're only going to use that pin once at the very beginning of uh, power on. So that's where a circuit like this comes in. This little chip will just hold that reset line low for you, um, keep it nice and clean, and then release when the power has stabilized. But um, as I mentioned, this part is uh, not recommended for new designs anymore. Um, this is the, oh, sorry, this is the data sheet, NRND, uh, they recommend the APX 803S, which is also not available. One thing to watch out for is, um, this chip has two versions, the SA and the SR, um, whether pin one is ground or reset basically makes a difference. Uh, we want pin one to be ground and then reset and power, not one, you know, reset ground and power, like the opposite way, um, because we want something that we can drop into our existing designs. I mean, if I had to, I could reroute the PCBs, but boy, I really don't want to do that because I've got like 20 designs that use um, this sensor, uh, this uh, supervisor. Uh, so let's see what we've got. Um, you know, again, we used to pay about nine cents for these. Uh, we still have some on order, but don't know when we're going to get them because it's uh, last time buy. So let's get uh, something similar. So we want something that's a simple reset, power on reset circuit with one voltage monitoring. Um, I do want open drain or open collector because oftentimes I will be monitoring the V in, uh, the power input, and then, but not necessarily the three volt line. The three volt line, um, you know, may have a little bit more jitter in it. That said, once you get to like about 2.6 plus volts, the 3.3 volt uh, power supply will start to kick in. I mean, it's it's going to be lower because of the dropout, but it will be slowly coming up. I can hold that reset line until it gets to 3.3 volts, well within 100 millivol mi milliseconds, and then release um, to put the TFT in a good state. And we do want it into that SOT 23 for uh, an active low reset. Um, for the reset timeout, I don't really care. You know, this one is about 140 to 200 milliseconds. I'm flexible. Um, also, the voltage threshold, I'm flexible. So let's view similar. Um, so first up, I want something that's active because I don't want another NRND thing. 
So let's uh, only look at those. Next up, the voltage threshold. Um, this is important. You don't want it to be too low because I want to make sure that we trigger when the power supply is is coming up and is is in a good state. Um, but I don't want it too high because remember, you know, the power supply is going to be going above 3.3 volts. I don't want there to be like little dips. If it drops 200 millivolts to 3.1, I don't want that to uh, trigger it. So 2.6 volts is what I picked before. But I think something between 2.5 and 2.9 uh, will probably be just fine. That's still well below the 3.3 volts. And don't forget, this is also I'm monitoring V in, not the 3.3 volt line. And so, you know, I have a little bit more leeway there. Okay, so let's apply all. Let's also look only at what's in stock because I have to purchase these now. So you tied me over until I get um, the, the order that I booked a while ago. Uh, and second, let's sort by pricing because I need to buy about 10,000 of these. Um, so it looks like we have a couple options here. Um, there is, of course, the APX803L20. So that's very promising. Um, I think this is just, um, you know, the new version. Again, we want pin one to be ground. So let's make sure pin one ground. Yes, we want the SOT23 uh, version, not R. So let's look at the part number and make sure we get the right version. And hold on, they usually have a part code. Okay, so I want, let's see, this is the APX803L20. And then is it SR? No, this is SA. So this is the correct type. So, um, this looks like it's got the right pinout. It's the SA pinout. And then, uh, let's see, 803 blank, zero milliseconds voltage, SA package, and then the real active low open drain. So this is actually pretty good. And um, 03, oh, sorry, 20, um, the L20 means it's 220 milliseconds, which is exactly the same thing as we had before. So this is a great option. Um, so I'll probably pick up some of these, but I also want to look at some other options. So looking at the RT9818, um, looks like there's, uh, these are available in slightly lower voltages. So 2.7, if I wanted something closer to my original spec, uh, maybe you're a little pickier on that. So for this one, okay, again, you have to be careful because there's so many package options. This is 9818C, and C is also 220 milliseconds, which is good. Reset bar, active low, good. Dash 2.7 or 2.9, so that's good, 2.7 to 2.9 volts. Uh, these are both lead free. And then GV, uh, G is green, halogen free. And then V, so it's the SOT 233. Uh, not L type. So let's look at SOT23. There's two SOT23 options. Again, there's L type and non L type. The one that's available is uh, this one, which is reset ground VDD. Uh, let's look at this uh, reset ground VDD, which is actually not what we want. That's the opposite orientation. We want ground reset VCC. So we can't use these two. Um, and then let's look at one more option here, the TLV 803 EA26. Also nice, it, the voltage is much closer. Again, it's all about trade-offs. The voltage here is gonna be 2.6 volts. You can kind of tell by that 26. But let's also make sure that this is the right um, pinout. So looking at this data sheet, takes a moment. Um, okay, scrolling down, okay, so Again, so many options. TLV 803, and the two versions are 803E, yeah, 803EA and 803EB. 803E is open drain active low, good. Um, B is 40 microseconds, so that's very little. Sorry, E, uh, yeah, A, sorry. A is 200 milliseconds, which is what we want. B is 40 microseconds, much too low. So we'd go with the A version, this one. Uh, and then 26, which means the threshold voltage is 2.6 volts. And then um, 
R D B Z R. So R means pin one is reset, pin two is ground, which is again the wrong package. So we can't use these either. Um, so you know it's interesting. It's like there are a lot of options, and unfortunately, once we get past here, the, the pricing gets a little expensive. But so far, you know, the, the trade-off is, is that looking at the ones that have the closer voltage, 2.6, 2.7, um, not going to work because the pinout is wrong. So alternative is one, I can use this version with the higher voltage. I think it's going to be okay. I think 2.9 volts is not too close to the 3.3 volt uh, logic level. Hopefully it doesn't dip. I mean, that's like 0.5 volts uh, difference. So hopefully it won't dip too low. And if it does, it'll auto reset. I don't know, maybe... After testing, I'll determine if I need to add more capacitance on the power line. Um, but it is the right pinout, and there's 23,000 in stock. So I think I'm going to go with this. Again, test it out, make sure it works on all my designs. If it doesn't, and I have to go with the 2.6 volt um, voltage rating, I'm going to have to swap those two wires. The stencil will be the same, but I'll have to make sure that I don't get the wrong part with the um, the wrong PCB version, which is a little frightening to me. So I'm hoping that this version works. I'm going to pick up some of these, hand solder them into my TFT designs and then just test them with a couple like flaky power supplies and see what occurs. And hopefully these can tide me over till my order comes in. And that's the research. Wait.